I've used 22 different sleep trackers over the past few years, and today I'll share what I've learned and my thoughts on each one. I'll go through four main categories. Non-wearables, so devices you don't need to wear. Wearables, which typically will be on your wrist or finger. The ones that I'm not the biggest fans of. And then finally, apps. And disclaimer, I'm not gonna talk about data accuracy because these are consumer devices, not medical. And I always follow the philosophy of all wearables are wrong, but some can be helpful. So take all the data information with a grain of salt. But first, why did I get into sleep tracking in the first place? So I really wanted to understand if I sleep better, is it actually going to improve my life? Will I feel more energized? Will I be more focused? And will I be able to perform better athletically? So that's when I bought my very first sleep tracker. And ever since then, I just keep putting on more and more sleep trackers every single day. But they have guided me in terms of teaching me to sleep more consistently, take magnesium, avoid alcohol, and numerous other things. First, the non-wearables. This entire category is sleep trackers that you don't need to wear, you don't need to worry about charging. You literally just set it up, you forget about it, and it'll do everything for you. I like these ones because they're more convenient, yet at the same time, they can be a bit more challenging in terms of accuracy because they're not directly contacted with your skin. First, the Eight Sleep. This is a heating and cooling mattress as well as a sleep tracker. You can either buy the mattress or just the cover. And not only does it adjust the temperature based on how you're sleeping that night, but it also tracks your sleep and gives you a whole bunch of data as well as a sleep fitness score. I really like the Eight Sleep because out of all the covers that you put underneath your sheets, this one kind of stays in its place. It doesn't move around as much. The app is really easy to use. And if you sleep with a partner, you can have one device track two different people on each side. So in terms of most bang for your buck, this is like a dual sleep tracker in one. Something very similar to that is the Sleep Me Doc Pro with their little Insight Sleep Tracker. This is a little bit cheaper version. It goes under the covers. It does move around a little bit more, but it allows you to save some money by just getting half of a bed. But then if you ever do decide to upgrade, you do need to buy two separate devices. So maintenance and all that becomes more of a challenge. But this is a secondary option if you want something underneath your sheets. Then there are three different versions that sit on your nightstand. So this will take up more space in terms of your physical bedroom versus just being underneath your sheets and kind of hidden. But these devices will use special technologies to like figure out your breathing rate, your heart rate, and how much you're moving throughout the night and you have to make sure to appropriately put it facing you on your side of the bed. So depending on how high your nightstand is, how far away your nightstand is, you might have some challenges in terms of orienting them. But these are even easier options to set up because you just have to kind of put it there and plug it in. The first one is the Nest Home Hub Generation 2. This is probably the first ones that I ever discovered. You plug it in, you put it next to your bed. There is a screen, but it does dim when you go to bed. And then you can tap the screen and see your sleep data right when you wake up in the morning as well as set alarms and do a whole bunch of other things. When I did catch the illness earlier this year, it did notice that my respiratory rate went up. So I think for someone who wants to get into sleep tracking, but you don't want to wear anything and you don't want to spend a lot of time setting things up and you already have a Google account, this is a great device to start with. Next is the Amazon Halo Rise, very similar to the Google Home Hub, but they have this feature where you can turn on a bright light when you want to wake up in the morning. So not only is it sound, but also light. I love having an alarm that's like a, hey, let's wake you up in light sleep. Let's make it easy transition from sleep to wake. I recently started using it as it just came out. And so far, I'm really liking the whole light up the room feature in the morning, as long as I'm not wearing a sleep mask. All these devices will be linked down below. So if you are thinking about buying any of them, please make sure to click that link because it helps support the channel and I can keep making videos like this and keep overspending on all these devices. And the last one is Somnified. They actually stopped making it for consumers, but very similar device. You put it there. There is no screen. It tracks your sleep. It shows the time, but they provide the most amount of different data variables in terms of like the amount of light in your room, the level of noise, and the detailed information you can get inside of the app is absolutely insane. I wish there was a similar product that would get this amount of data in just one little box. Now onto the wearable section. Probably one of the most popular ones that everyone's talking about right now is the Aura Ring. I have three of these multiple videos that you can watch about them. But this is probably the most subtle wearable that you can put on. It looks like a regular ring, but it's a bit thicker. They say it's more accurate when you wear it on these two fingers versus like your other fingers. Your data and sleep tracking is gonna be dependent on your skin color, the size of the ring, how thick your fingers are that day. But overall, I found this to be kind of the most interesting sleep tracker because it's so small, the battery lasts for four days, and it's super easy to get started if you're new to wearables. And what's really interesting, there's like an app called Natural Cycles in terms of birth control and planning pregnancy. And I feel like if you can have a ring that can help you do either of those things, it's truly fascinating. I'm still learning more. The Aura Ring has a decent charging experience. There's a little charging dock that you need to slide it on top of. The only issue is you can only use your charger for your size. So you can't borrow a friend's charger if their ring is a different size. The next biggest competitor is the Whoop Strap. This is the Whoop 4.0. And you can wear this on your wrist, your bicep, in your shorts, in your shirt, as well as in a bra. This is super neat because it's also tracking your heart rate 24 seven, unlike most trackers. And hands down, my favorite feature here is their journal feature. They allow you to input data points of your lifestyle behaviors to better understand, hey, does taking magnesium does drinking alcohol, does that improve my sleep or does it make my sleep much worse? So I think their monthly dashboards, their weekly dashboards are the most powerful thing to understand how can you change your life for the better. I think if Aura or Apple copied that journal feature and tried to make it even better, they could potentially beat out Whoop, but I still wear it every single day just because of that. The Whoop strap charging experience is absolutely amazing. You charge the charging puck and then you slide this on and then you just let it charge. You actually never need to take the device off because you can just let it charge on your body. I wish Apple had something like this. 
Next is the Garmin watch. They have a plethora of watches. It's a little bit overwhelming. I recently got this one as the Phoenix 7X and I am in love with it. The battery life is like 25 days, which is insane. It tracks my workouts, it tracks my sleep. It does everything most other devices do and it gives me like a, hey, are you ready to train? Are you overstrained? So very similar recovery features like the Aura and Whoop. And I've almost thought about, hey, maybe the Garmin is actually gonna replace my Whoop because it provides most of the same data, but better battery life. And I can only wear so many devices on my arms. The Garmin watch charge with a little cable on the back so you do have to take it off but I do love that it, you know that it's charging when you plug it in because a lot of the magnetic stuff you might not fully put it on properly. Speaking of my arms on the other wrist I have the Apple Watch Ultra. They just updated their software to add more sleep tracking data as well as skin temperature. I'm in love with my Apple Watch. I've been sleeping with it since the Watch OS 9 came out. Yeah I have no one else with other than my Apple Watch. Somebody send help. But you don't need the most expensive Apple Watch. You can get the Series 8 or the SE. The SE is absolute a steal. $250 for a sleep tracking device that doesn't have a membership. Honestly, if you're okay with wearing something on your wrist, this is the way to go. And as I say, all wearables are wrong, but some are helpful. The Apple Watch provides the data, but it doesn't really provide any data aggregation in terms of how should you change your behavior. So you do have to download some third-party apps that I'll mention later. But overall, in terms of capturing the raw data, it does that very well in comparison to all the other trackers. The Apple Watch charging experience is okay. The battery life isn't amazing, but what I like to do is charge it when I'm showering or right before I go to bed. I put it on there for like 10 to 30 minutes. You just take it off and the magnetic charger is so satisfying. The Coros Watch. This is a running watch, but it also does sleep tracking. It's super small, it's minimalistic, and it's light. If you want the lightest possible sleep tracker on your wrist, this is probably the way to go. The Coros charging experience uses a little port on the back. It's like three little dots. You kind of have to just plug it in, and it charges kind of like the Apple mouse, where it's like upside down. It's a little bit weird and funky, but it works, and you know it's charging because it's a cable. Then comes the fresh new Google Pixel watch. If you are a Pixel user, this is a great option, as well as the Samsung Galaxy watch. They look clean. It's a smart watch. It also does fitness tracking, if that's what you want. Or if you have a Fitbit, this also falls in the same category. The Fitbit ecosystem is nice. I'm not the biggest fan of it as I'm an Apple fan girl, but this is also good enough if you want to understand your sleep and they give you little recovery scores as well, which is helpful. A little more data based on how you slept more than like Apple Watch does. I've tried the Fitbit, but I've not tried the Samsung Galaxy Watch, but I think they use very similar software in terms of tracking, very somewhat similar hardware. They're good enough devices if you're in the Android ecosystem. The Google Pixel Watch charging experience is decent. It follows very similar to the Apple Watch, but the magnets are not as strong, so it's easy for it to fall off. Some of us don't love screens and that's where Jeff Bezos comes in with his Amazon Halo. There's the Halo Band and the Halo View. The Halo View has a screen, but this one does not. It's very similar to the Whoop Strap, but it's smaller. It's like half the size. This is like a cheaper alternative, very similar feature set. They don't have the journaling, but they do have this tone analysis, but that's for the daytime. Go watch my fitness trackers video right here. But in terms of sleep tracking, they give you aggregated data in terms of how did you sleep, your overall rest and recovery. If you're someone who's just getting started, you want to save as much money as possible, it's a great idea to get this when it's on sale. I bought this for like $35. Because let's be honest, most of you are going to buy one of these and you're going to wear it for a week and then you're not going to use it after that. So buy the cheapest one, try it out and return it if you don't want it. The Amazon Halo charging experience is absolutely awful. It's like this little clamp thing that you kind of like snap in there. You have to make sure it's the right direction and then get it in there. And like any device that you buy that needs to be charged needs to have a good charging experience. Now, if you're like my wrist and my fingers is not good enough, I want to be able to track my brain waves when I'm sleeping. There's two great options. The first most powerful one is the Dream Headband. This one is extremely neat. They used to have this feature in Europe where it would like create the special noise to increase your deep sleep values, but they never brought it to the US and now they've discontinued it for consumers. So if you want to buy this off of me, let me know. Maybe I'll sell it to you for a nice price. But essentially you wear this on your forehead and it's going to track your brain waves to better understand what sleep stages that you're in. I love the dream headband because it had like these audio features where when you're going to bed, it would play some music as well as breathing exercises. And it made it super easy to track my sleep and feel really calm for sleep without having to have my phone with me. There's a speaker inside of here and I could hear audio. What I would love is a little headband that you can just put on with a speaker and you could just have an NSDR track play and then you fall asleep, you wake up and it aggregates your sleep scores based on your brain waves. It's a bit overkill, but I did wear this for a long time and I haven't worn it in a while just because it's like a hassle and it feels uncomfortable when it's on your head. The dream charging experience is absolutely amazing because it's got a little charging dock and you just slide it on. It's super easy to take on and off. You just have to make sure that these things line up. A smaller available option is the Muse headband. I think this is the Gen 1 and this is the Gen 2. This is obviously more malleable. You put it on your forehead like so and you need to charge this device via micro USB, not even USB-C. Come on. Similar concept, they'll track your brain waves when you're sleeping. I don't use this as much once again because like you have to charge it every single day and you need to have your phone nearby to get the data. So that creates two friction points that are a bit challenging for sleep use. But they do have this really cool thing called
called digital sleeping pills where you can put your headphones in and wear this and have your iPhone next to you, then it'll play a track as well as track your sleep. It's just a lot more effort, whereas this is no phone, no headphones, it's all built into one system. And I also don't wanna sleep with headphones in my ears because like I like to sleep on my side and I don't want headphones going to my ear on the side, it just feels weird and I just consciously can't do it. If you're someone who wants to track their brainwaves and is willing to put in the effort of putting headphones in, putting this on and having your phone nearby, this is worth it. Now to make things even more complicated, these are the ones that I've tried but I'm not the biggest fan of. This is the Bioshrap. I've had this for a couple years. I wore it for about a year and a half. The charging experience is absolutely awful. They have a little charging dock that you put it on here and it just never stays on. Like they don't even use magnets. If it slowly moves off, boom, it never charges the device. So I always had issues with making sure that it was charged. Their marketing does say they use a red PPG and it's clinical grade, but the Whoop, the Aura Ring and the Apple Watch have all added red PPGs as well. So I think Bioshrap really needs to step up their game. I also remember their CEO saying they're focusing on research, not consumers. So not sure you'd want to buy a product that's not really focused on consumers anymore. But they did have a nice feature where you could share your data with someone else. But if you want to put this on someone where you can remotely access their data, this is a great option. The Wellu O2 ring, this is a oxygen ring that you can wear in terms of understanding your oxygen levels throughout the night. The Aura ring does oxygen levels. The Apple Watch now does oxygen levels and the Garmin does. But this is exclusively focused on that. I think it's an interesting concept. I did wear it for a little bit. It's a bit thick and sturdy. I'm not sure how accurate the oxygen values are as I noticed it was slightly different sometimes from other devices as well as it showed that I got to the 85%, which is relatively low and dangerous, but I've done sleep tests and I don't have sleep apnea. So this potentially could be a cheaper option if you want a ring just to measure your oxygen levels as well as a little bit of sleep tracking. But once again, I'm not a fan. And lastly, the circular ring. This is very similar to the Aura ring, except that has a button, it vibrates, and it has these little protruding spots. I feel like almost cut my skin, so I'm not the biggest fan of this, but it does have like interchangeable plates where you can change the color of your ring. And then they built probably the best charging experience out of all the rings. It's magnetic, it's strong, and it just flops on right there. And any size ring can use the same charger. It's USB-C, it's extremely small, so you can take this with you, put it on your keychain. I would love to see Aura Ring copying this charger. This is a nice ring and they pull all the same data most other devices do, but I just haven't been in love with the user experience. I would spend a little bit more money and just go with the Aura Ring, honestly. Another one is a Somnox pillow. This is the thing that you can hug and it vibrates and it helps you like slow down your breathing. And lastly, my favorite apps where I can pull the data from these trackers and understand my recovery and a little bit more on my sleep. Some of my favorite sleep apps are Rise Science. I love being able to see my sleep debt over the last couple of weeks. And if you do partner sharing, you can see your sleep debt for your partner. So if both of you are trending in the wrong direction or one of you is trending, you can make sure to be a little bit more mindful with your partner. You can make sure to push them and motivate them to focus on their sleep a little bit more. I love getting little nudges of like, hey, you haven't been sleeping as much the past couple weeks. Let's, let's focus on sleeping a little bit more tonight. Next is Crescent Health. They provide a sleep coach, sleep performance. If you're someone who really wants to optimize their sleep and have someone kind of guide you through that process, they have a great program. Let them know Shervin Shares sent you and they'll give you a discount. HRV for training. I've been using this a lot more to understand, hey, how is my physical recovery for training that day? It's just another data point based on my HRV. Athletics and Chipper, these kind of copy the Whoop philosophy of a recovery score in Circle. It's been really fascinating to pair these apps with the Apple Watch and compare that to my Whoop strap. They're both totally different, so to take every piece of data with a grain of salt. Two other HRV apps, Training Today and HRV Tracker. Somewhat interesting, but yet they still provide different data points. They haven't really changed my life, but they're interesting to look at. And lastly, Vital. This is kind of like the social media for health and wellness. You can publish your sleeps, your runs, your workouts, your weightlifting, photos, interact with people. Go follow me on there. They're still in beta and testing things out. I love health and I love social media because you can promote each other to live healthier and better lives. And that's kind of the goal of this YouTube channel. So if I can get more people excited about living a healthier life, I've achieved my goal. Now out of all of these devices, which one is my favorite and which one would I buy? I think the two best ones are probably the Whoop and the Aura Ring. The Aura Ring is super subtle. It's easy to put on. You can leave it by your nightstand and not wear it during the day. And then the Whoop is just easy to keep on all day long. And I love the journal feature on the Whoop to really understand your lifestyle behaviors and how they impact your sleep. So if you want to track your sleep, no screen, not get distracted. These are probably the best two. If you are an iPhone user, I would go with the Apple Watch because you get a whole bunch of other features. You can turn on Do Not Disturb, turn off your message notifications, and you get your sleep tracking, your fitness tracking, your computer, everything you need is all on your wrist. And this is hands down my favorite device of them all. But if you're an Android user, Garmin is also a great option to go with because it will provide the same recovery scores that Aura and Whoop do, and it works with the ecosystem of Android or iPhone. I want to give a shout out to Playbetter for giving me a discount on the Garmin to help make this video. Other than that, my top four trackers are down below. Go check them out. And if you haven't yet, go watch my video where I compare all the fitness trackers I've ever tried. It'll be in the link right here.